Coming up on today's Flashcast, the Richter scale hit 6.2 yesterday in Japan and they are still experiencing aftershocks. Is this spring's cold weather a thing of the past? To find out, stay tuned for my full forecast. Once again, Kent State sports are very busy this weekend. Find out more in sports. And a cute little girl gets a new wagon to start her spring and has a big smile on her face. Today is April 15th and this is your Friday Flashcast. This is TV2 News. Hello and welcome to today's Flashcast. I'm John Koss. And I'm Alex Taylor. Well, I have my spring dress on. Good. I'm ready for spring. Good. I'm ready for this warm weather, so I hope that it continues. I want to see what's going on. Very excited. Kent needs to get the air on in the dorms, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I'm That's excited. That's fine. All right, well, let's shoot it over to Krista and see what she has for us in weather. Krista? Thank you, John and Alex. I also have my spring dress on today, and we should all by now be used to Northeast Ohio weather, like, oh, let's just say having four seasons in one day, or even winter in the spring, like we've been experiencing lately. But will that warm weather that we've been having lately stick? Will the cold come back? Will it be gone for good? Well, I'm here to tell you that at least within the next week or so, it will stay warm. If we look at today, your current weather is actually 53 degrees. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Your high today is going to be around 70 degrees. The wind is coming from the east about nine miles per hour. Not a whole lot, so it's still going to be warm. Tonight, your low is going to be 42, and your evening temperature is going to reach 57 with clear skies, which is the perfect transition into tomorrow. Tomorrow, your high is going to be 71 and sunny, so hang up your bathrobes and your slippers and put on some real shoes, go outside. I know I've been stuck inside this whole spring so far because it's just been so cold, but I finally get to go outside and enjoy the weather and I couldn't be more excited. If we take a look at our seven day forecast again, Friday and Saturday, we have um, the upper, upper 70s and into the rest of the weekend, you're going to have around 70 degrees and Monday and Tuesday are gonna drop a little bit as well as Wednesday into the 60s. But Sunday we can, or Thursday we can see for Flash Fest, we have sunny and 73 degrees, perfect temperature for those going to Flash Fest and the rest of the week is just going to be super warm. I'm well, that so sounds good, Krista. Yeah, the weather seems really, really nice. So glad it is warming up. Nice. We've we've been waiting for this for a very long time. Unfortunately, it is not the same in Japan. Over 12 dozen aftershocks, along with the initial shake, has turned minor damages into nearly a billion repairs so far. Fortunately, the quake was centered mostly underground, leaving chances for a tsunami minimal. An earthquake reaching 6.2 on the Richter scale struck Japan yesterday. The quake injured more than 800 people in southern Japan and produced equally devastating aftershocks. Over 12 dozen aftershocks, along with the initial shake, has turned minor damages into billions of dollars of repairs. Fortunately, the quake was centered underground, leaving chances for a tsunami minimal. A New Jersey woman admitted to beating her grandmother Thursday. 39-year-old Catherine Schubert of New Jersey had been living with her mother and grandmother after graduating from a rehab facility. While her mother was away in New York, Schubert got into an argument with her grandmother, which led to the beating. Schubert left her grandmother on the floor the rest of the weekend. Her grandmother received medical attention too late and passed away from complications due to head trauma. And the New York Post endorsed Donald Trump for president last night. They are banking on the idea that he will become more presidential if he wins the Republican nomination. The tabloid's new endorsement comes just days before the New York primary on April 19th. The Post described the Republican frontrunner as a true New Yorker and a rookie candidate and said, quote, Trump is now an imperfect messenger carrying a vital message. And three years ago today, tragedy stuck struck the city of Boston. Over 200 people were injured and three were killed, including an eight-year-old. Two bombs went off and at the finish line conducted by two terrorist brothers. Many events have been scheduled today throughout the city for all of those who were affected. There will also be a wreath-laying ceremony at both locations where the bombs exploded that day. 
Arizona's flawed voting system led to the denial of voters' rights to vote last month. Maricopa County's 60 polling stations could not compensate for the number of voters for last month's Democratic primary. In 2012, there were 200 polling stations. This considerable reduction was done to save money. This reduction, however, came with its own cost, as many voters, after waiting for hours, were denied the ability to vote. girl will make your heart melt and to find out why stick with us the Indians start a new home series tonight find out more in sports and as Zika hit a local town in Ohio find out more coming up Smokey Bear has asked you to use fire responsibly. Fire is due to an unattended campfire. Go time. Here's how you can stay on the front lines of preventing wildfires. Always watch your campfire before leaving. Drown it, stir it, drown it again, and feel that the fire is out cold. Oh. Bullseye! And you won't need a visit from these guys. Copy that. You can be Smokey's wingman when enjoying nature and prevent wildfires. Visit SmokeyBear.com for more fire prevention tips. Welcome back to your Friday Flashcast. Alex, what can you tell us what's going on in Portage County? Well, yes, thanks, John. The Summit County Public Health Department confirmed that the first case of the Zika virus in Summit County on Thursday. Little information is known about the individual who is infected, but we do know that she was infected while traveling in late February. Also, pregnancy is not an issue with this individual because it is spread primarily by mosquitoes and the individual is not infectious. According to the medical director at the Summit County Primary Hospital, this case is not a threat to public safety. And a Ravenna teen is being charged with first-degree robbery in Lexington, Kentucky. 19-year-old Alex Farrell was involved in an attempted robbery on April 9th that ended with the intended victim shooting and killing one of his attackers. Farrell is a student at the UK College of Arts and Sciences Department and graduated from Rootstown High in 2015. Farrell turned himself in to police Tuesday evening. And the Ohio ballot board has given yet another green light to a second group proposing to amend the state constitution to allow the use of medical marijuana. Republican Secretary of State John Husted and the other four members of the panel agreed to this on Thursday. Proponents will need to gather more than 300,000 valid signatures from registered voters by early July to qualify for this year's general election. A Montana couple is going viral after they stole each other's hearts at a bar. Unfortunately, a robber stole something else while the two lovebirds were showing their affection. CNN's Gene Mose reports. There they were, kissing, caps backwards, blissfully unaware, as a woman and two male robbers walked into the tap in brandishing guns. Did that stop the lovebirds? Nope. They kept on nuzzling as the bandits in bandanas emptied the register. One of the robbers brushed right past them, and finally you see the moment when it dawns on Don Juan that there's a robbery in progress. The bandit even steals what may be Loverboy's phone. No one was hurt. The surveillance tape went viral as everyone tapped into the tap-ins kissing couple, which upset owner Bobby Rhodes. He told the Billings Gazette, Nobody has bothered to ask, how is my bartender doing? He's doing well. Love is blind, says the internet, in this case, deaf and dumb as well. The only arms they noticed were around each other. Jeannie Mo, CNN, New York. Oh my gosh, well, that's pretty funny. I like the tweet that said, love is blind. It definitely is blind. Hashtag goals. Hashtag that's goals. That's all I can say. That's great. <laughs> we have track, baseball, and golf this spring. The sports are really heating up. That's right, Alex. And we are now joined by sports anchor Cottrell Simpson for all that and more. Cottrell? Thanks, John. Kent State's men and women's track teams are set to compete against Ashland, Akron, and Youngstown State in the Northeast Ohio Quad. Leading the way in the sprint events will be senior William Barnes. Mac Men's Field Athlete of the Week Reggie Jagers is expected to do damage in the throwing events. And for the women's team, Jalen Mosley heads the charge in the throwing events, while Roseanne Erickson will headline long jump. 
The meet will be ran at Akron and is scheduled to begin at 3.30. And from track to baseball, Kent State's baseball team will be visiting Eastern Michigan for a three-game series over the weekend. The Flashes are on the top of the MAC division and are coming off of a 5-2 win against Youngstown State. After this series, the men will be returning home to face Penn State next Wednesday. The first pitch is slated for tonight at 6. Kent State's men's golf team will head to Purdue to compete in the Boilermaker Invitational. This 15-team tournament will feature four MAC schools and seven schools from the Big Ten. According to GolfStat, there are seven teams in the top 80 that will be competing in this competition. Last year, Kent State finished tied for 12th in the tournament. The Invitational will begin Saturday morning at 845. Now from college to the major leagues. Tonight, the Cleveland Indians will begin a three-game home series against the New York Mets. In their last series, the Tribe lost the first game against the Tampa Bay Rays, but they bounced back to win the next two games and win the series. For the Mets, Bartolo Colon will be on the mound, and Cody Anderson will get the start for the Indians. The first pitch is expected to be at 7-10 tonight. Well, that's all I have for sports. For up-to-the-minute coverage on all things Kent State sports, be sure to follow us at TV2KSU Sports. I'm Control Simpson. John? Thanks, Cottrell. Well, this little girl wrote a thank you note to her local police department, but for what? Let's take a look. This is a picture. This is a picture saying, Daddy. <laughs> thank you, Izzy and Bangor PD. <laughs> My boyfriend's mom stopped by and she told us that the wagon wasn't there, and we were like, oh no, and we went and looked and it wasn't. Yeah, Dad had the dot stolen. And so Michaela was really upset about it and was wondering what happened to it, so we made a police report. It's kind of sad yeah, that someone would take a wagon in the first place. It obviously upset a lot of people. The outreach from the, the community and, and, and around the country from people uh, stating they wanted to buy a wagon for the little girl, that was nice, but we didn't accept that at that time because we were really kind of hoping someone would bring back the wagon, but it didn't happen. A nice uh, man and his daughter named Izzy came up from uh, southern Maine and they wanted to pitch in a little bit. They gave us $50 towards the wagon and we decided we'd go find one and, and with the help of Walmart who donated the wagon in the end, which was really nice, uh, we were able to give them a gift card as well to go with the wagon. And they got me a new wagon. Just amazing for someone so little to want to do something like that to help someone else. It was really selfless and sweet. Like, she was really happy. <laughs> she just like smiles from ear to ear. She was excited. She didn't expect it. We just got home from school. Nizzy was just a darling kid, and so was Michaela. And uh, when she got her wagon, she was very delighted, which was nice to see, because you don't get to see that on kids' faces that much doing this job. So it was great, and uh, we're glad she has a wagon, and we hope she has a great summer using it in Bangor. I'm really thankful to the Bangor Police Department. I didn't expect so many people to care. I like to tell them uh, I can do this best to Debbie. <laughs> Oh my gosh, oh, that's so cute, right? Adorable. Her laugh was so adorable. I love her in that wagon. So cute. And that Walmart donate, donated it. That's really good. It's wonderful. Yeah. It's, it's so nice that Walmart got to donate it, but like, how could you steal from like a little girl? Like, that's sad. Like, yeah, you're like, right. Yeah, you're so right. It's not like something expensive. Like, you know you are taking this from a child. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, you're right. For yeah. the police department to like care that much about a wagon, you know, it just sees, like it it's just wonderful. shows you how like great people you can know, actually like be. Pay it forward. Like, Everyone's lost a wagon world. at some yeah. point. Everyone's lost a wagon? Absolutely. Well, Have maybe you? metaphorically. If oh. everyone maybe cared once in a while. To... Oh, yes. Okay. I, I, I never had a wagon to lose. You didn't have a wagon? No. <laughs> you didn't have a wagon? You didn't? Oh, my everyone gosh. I think it was really adorable. Well, thank you for watching today's Flashcast. Be sure to tune in tonight into TV2 News tonight at 530 for updates on all these stories and more. And be sure to tune in tonight at 10 for an all-new episode of Roll Call. I'm John Koss. And I'm Alex Taylor. Have a great day, Portage County. Your daughter just had her first breakup. Do you A, put yourself in her shoes? 
<laughs> B, console her. Don't worry, sweetie. This is gonna happen a lot. Or C, find her a new boyfriend. Nice single boys. <laughs> that was weird. As a parent, there are no perfect answers, but you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same.